What if I told you it was possible for the entire internet to run on the blockchain? That all this scaling nonsense that people in the crypto world are talking about is completely solvable. And that in the future, we could see applications on the scale of Twitter, Uber, or even TikTok running with blockchain as their backend. A plan actually exists to make this happen, and it is being worked on right now by the Optimism Collective in the form of the super chain. This idea of the super chain is gaining traction to the point where other companies have joined in, including Coinbase's base chain, which plans to bring its 100 million customers to the super chain. If you've seen a lot of other videos on my channel, I love you. But also, you've probably heard of Optimism super chain before. The word has been tossed around a lot in the last few months, without people necessarily having a detailed understanding of what the super chain is. Most people get the general idea that the super chain is a bunch of chains working together that somehow make things scale better. But the goal of this video is to give you a much more detailed understanding of what the super chain is and how it can take us from where we are today to an internet with blockchain as the backend. So instead of thinking about super chain for a second, let's think about blockchains as they exist today. There are some good parts and bad parts about blockchains. One of the good parts is that they are always on. You never have to worry about an application shutting down because a server is not working somewhere. You can also do a lot of interesting things on blockchains that you cannot do on other computing platforms. You can have programmable scarcity, which means that you can send real value between applications. And all applications are composable, which gives them a really unique set of network effects as applications build on top of each other. But there are downsides. Gas costs for even L2 networks are still really high. While it may be okay to pay a dollar for certain kinds of speculative or financial transactions, it is not really suitable to pay a dollar to do something like post on social media. For that reason, most of the popular applications that we see on blockchains today all have to do with financial speculation. These costs severely limit the types of applications that can hit scale on the blockchain while still maintaining a good user experience. But imagine for a second that gas costs were not an issue. With the scalability enabled by the super chain, gas costs could be so minuscule that they actually compete with the normal backend server costs for applications. In some ways, it might even be cheaper because the costs of running the application will be distributed among all of the users that are actually using and gaining value from it, which is a much better deal for developers. So a super chain with near zero gas costs obviously sounds like a good idea, but what does it actually look like? As we try to achieve infinite scalability, there are a number of bottlenecks that we hit. The super chain is Optimism's attempt to smash through these bottlenecks. As we try to get more and more transactions running on a blockchain, we use up more and more block space. While blocks can actually be made bigger on specific chains, eventually bigger and bigger blocks means bigger and bigger requirements for the computers that are running the blockchain software. Eventually, scaling through increasing the block size becomes too difficult for computers especially computers owned by individuals, to run. For that reason, the super chain is actually a collection of horizontally scaling chains. Horizontal scaling in this case really just means running all of these chains in parallel. Horizontal scaling like this is likely the only way that blockchains can scale to infinity, so that's what the super chain will be. But in order for that horizontal scaling to be useful, the chains in the super chain need to be able to work together. And in order for them to work together, these chains need to have certain specific properties. First of all, all chains that are going to be a part of the super chain are going to be built using the OP stack, which is the open source modular blockchain framework published by Optimism. Beyond that, all of the chains in the super chain will have this list of properties that was published by Optimism. Here are all of those different properties and their reasoning, but the point is that with all of these properties, these super chains are going to be able to work together really, really well. There are already a long list of L2s like Optimism, Arbitrum, and ZK Sync that each have slightly different properties. When a developer is developing an application for the super chain, however, they don't have to think about the individual properties of every single chain in the super chain. They can just think about developing and deploying to the super chain as a whole. Okay, now that we understand that the super chain is a collection of chains with shared properties, let's dive a little bit deeper into a technical understanding of what is actually going on. This stuff is the real alpha of the video because once you understand it, you'll understand the future where crypto is headed. There are three main important technical concepts for the super chain. 
derivation, cross-chain messaging, and data availability. Derivation is how the actual state of these L2 chains is determined. As a reminder, the state is the current tally of all of the different balances on the blockchain and all of the different data points in all of the applications. You see, the thing about L2 networks is that all of the data that exists on these L2 networks is already embedded in the L1 that they are building on. All that these L2 rollups are are slightly different derivation functions that take that data as it's described in L1 and derive it into a usable format for the L2. Optimism, Arbitrum, and ZK Sync all have slightly different derivation functions and mechanisms. For an OP stack chain that's built for the super chain, these derivation functions can differ, but those differences are defined by the OP config. That brings us to this formula. The L2 chain in the super chain is equal to the output of the derivation function, which takes into account the data on L1 and the OP config. In the case of chains on the super chain, the derive function is actually constant, which means that a piece of node software that's programmed with the general derivation function can get the state in the transactions from every single super chain chain by inputting its OP config. So that's derivation. The next step is cross-chain messaging. The holy grail of cross-chain messaging is something called atomic composability. Atomic composability exists between smart contracts on a single chain already, but as far as I know, no one has been able to do this cross-chain. One of the best examples to understand what atomic composability actually is, is through flash loans. In a flash loan, a user borrows money from one smart contract, does something with one or more other smart contracts, and then pays all of that money back plus interest to the original smart contract. Because all of these different steps are part of the same transaction, if we get back to the payback portion, but don't have the funds to pay back the flash loan, the entire transaction fails and the flash loan never even happens in the first place. The big innovation of the super chain is enabling this kind of atomic composability across super chain chains. This means in the case of a flash loan, you could borrow money on one chain, interact with different smart contracts on other chains, and then pay back the flash loan on the original chain. This kind of cross-chain atomic composability not only enables the super scaling that we've been talking about, but unlocks a whole new set of network effects for the chains in the super chain. The way that the super chain is going to enable this is something called shared sequencing. The sequencer is the software or entity that actually determines the order of transactions on one of the chains. Each OP chain may have its own sequencer or set of sequencers, but the important thing to enable this composability is that the sequencers reach some kind of consensus on the overall ordering of the transactions. The sequencing layer of the super chain and how these different sequencers interact is actually a wide open area of research. Finally, if you are aware of different bottlenecks in Ethereum today, you might be thinking of one big one that stands in the way of infinite scalability, and that is actual block space on Ethereum. Because all of this L2 data is stored on Ethereum and Ethereum itself has a finite amount of block space, it doesn't matter how many horizontal chains you have working together, eventually you'll hit the limit. Luckily, Ethereum has its own scaling plans in the form of EIP4844 and data sharding. But while these improvements will directly benefit the super chain, there is another way around this data availability bottleneck and that is through Plasma. This is really sending optimism back to its roots because the optimism that we know today started out as a nonprofit called Plasma Group, which was dedicated to Ethereum scaling research using Plasma. The super chain can offload some of the data availability requirements from Ethereum to Plasma by adding a Plasma API. This Plasma API would move some of the data availability from Ethereum to off-chain data availability providers. If this sounds less secure, that's because it is. But there are enough guarantees that might make this a good way to store the majority of data from this new wave of applications. The most important data, such as that for financial applications, can stick to using Ethereum for data availability. 
The great thing about using Plasma and these external data availability providers is that now the Superchain has everything it needs to scale to infinity. Superchain really does look like the most compelling idea for the future of blockchain that I've seen, which is why I'm doing everything I can to learn about it right now. If you haven't already, check out my videos on BASE, the OP stack, or EIP4844 to learn more. If you are actually interested in deploying a chain to the super chain, shoot me a DM on Twitter and I should be able to point you in the right direction. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.